to be the man. You got to beat the man. This is my yard now. I will fight anyone and everyone. Here he comes. Where is he? Cut this shot. Your arms are just too short to box with God. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Future Heels podcast. My name is Jacob Best of the Realm Hotter. I'm joined today by Brian, Brian Peacock. As usual, my co-host. Now, we just got done watching Payback. I yeah. enjoyed the whole show. Um, it was pretty good. I can't think of any particular low points. No, no. The top of my head. Some I'm including points. the House of Horrors match. There's some, <laughs> there's some oddity weird, to it. Weird points. Not low points. Yeah. Weird points. Yeah. This show got lots of weird points. Yeah. Uh, and there were some parts that I thought kind of belonged on, like, Raw. But, okay. yeah, that's okay. Alright, so first up, we had Enzo and Cass defeating Gallows and Anderson. It was a bullshit finish. Uh, well, a little bit of bullshit. They went for the Magic Killer and uh, Cass booted somebody. And Enzo rolled up Gallows for the win. Now, I really wish they would push the club as, as a, a really, really strong tag. I also kind of feel that way about Enzo and Cass. Yeah, I was torn on this one, too. We're very biased, though. Because we, we met these guys, so... Yeah. We know they're super nice, and we're like, I'm super happy for them being successful. But Gallows and Anderson are badass, awesome wrestlers. And really funny. Yeah. <laughs> Enzo and Cass are really funny, too. Yeah. Um, I, I've seen, been seeing recently people are getting tired of their shtick. Like, did people get tired of uh, the New Age Outlaws back in the day? No. Yeah, probably not. I'm sure there's a couple people who did, but... Sure, but, I mean, th- As a whole to me, lot. these guys are, are this era's New Age Outlaws. Yeah. Because they're just awesome, and they're a couple of fucking goofballs. Yeah. Uh, they're fun. They're exactly. We need more fun in wrestling. So uh, then we had Miz TV, and Finn Balor made an excellent point that every time the Miz has a guest on, they end up kicking his ass. Right. <laughs> I love that. And what this is is what this is 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 is. is. How many times uh, can I use the right. word is? Yeah, is. Finn Balor got a concussion, what, two weeks ago? Yeah, I think. From Maybe longer. Jinder? Yeah. Yeah, from Jinder Mahal? The week before the shakeup. Yeah. And uh, so they're keeping him on TV, but he's not taking bumps. So they're almost treating him, I feel like, a guest star almost. Kind of. Just kind of cool. Yeah, I'm not sure what they're doing with the whole Bauer Club. I don't know how that's going to... I think that's just his fan base. I think that's what they're they're leaving that. Because he said... Because Miz asked... Miz asked something about the crowd, and Bauer was like, that's the Bauer Club. Yeah. Well, like, and just his attitude where, during Miz TV, I kind of wonder if they're changing his character a bit. I just if they do, I just hope they don't take away the demon though, because that's just that's. I think the demon will come out. I really he's like John Wayne, cool and something else tough. Oh yeah. Yeah, Yeah. because he got a leather jacket and everything. I'm okay with the dude Finn Balor being like that. Right. As long as we still get the demon when it's time. I still want to see. I don't know if we talked about this on the podcast. I would like for him to be like in a feud with somebody and he'd tell them like you need to stop you, you could make the demon come out right. and they just don't care he warns them you, this could happen right. you need to stop and sure enough during a pay per view we get one of these badass demon entrances and like it's something he can't really control yes yeah. like, I, let it, I let it control me in NXT and I'm not letting it control me anymore right you need to stop which would you're doing. upset people until it actually until but it's okay if it's a storyline thing right yeah would it be upset but and it's something that Vince McMahon is a big fan of Andre the Giant was an attraction right uh, Brock Lesnar is an attraction yeah. the demon is an attraction 
you don't show off your attractions all the time. Exactly. So, I love the idea of the demon being a every three month thing. Yeah, I mean, I'm not against you know him doing whatever as, as long as he keeps that because that's the coolest part of. I don't think that. they'll get rid of the demon thing. I hope not. I think it's too much of an ingrained. If it maybe, right? Maybe they'd shy away from it. When it was time. It was yeah, because if you think about it, if Finn Balor is a demon, and that's like his whole shtick, mm-hmm. that that's kind of limiting. I mean, granted, we have Kane and Undertaker. Right. Kane is a demon. I mean, they also got away from that after a while. Yeah. Um. And the Undertaker was the American Bat. The characters evolved. Finn Balor's character is evolving. Wasn't he just a demon in NXT? For the uh, most part? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't remember. It also wasn't like, he's a dead guy, or he is a demon. Right, yeah. I know it wasn't like that. It was... Yeah. But anyways, it, it this was a great match. Balor ended up coming back and hitting Miz with a sling blade and a, a drop kick to the corner. It was cool. It was a cool promo. Yeah. It's good that they're keeping Finn on TV because he said he's going after his title. Yeah, that was cool. (laughs) And the Miz, do you know who the champion is? It's Brock Lesnar. (laughs) Lesnar, I love that. Uh, I think Balor Lesnar would be, could be. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Especially with Balor pulling off the victory. Yeah. And I mean, double foot stomp the Lesnar, that could work. Yeah. That'd be bad at it. He would have to bring out the demon. Oh, definitely. In a big way. That would be great. Like what you were just saying. Yeah. Telling Brock he doesn't want to. Or even just the opposite being, you know, someone telling him, well, you're going to have to bring out the demon. You know that, right? Right. You know, someone like, like, like a, someone with Joe, someone he went up against at NXT. Yeah. Like, you know, you're going to have to do that again, right? Or, uh, what if. This I this would never happen. Well, you don't know because they listen to our podcast. Oh, of course they do because they they call them Shazara. Be up straight. You're welcome, guys. Um, and I just said that because I was too tired to say their names separately. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a big part of it. Um, but what if uh, Heyman warned Lesnar? Like you know he's got the demon. You don't wanna, yeah. You may want to rethink this. That would never happen. But yeah, you're right because Heyman's just so much in Lesnar's corner. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I really want to see that. I really want to see Lesnar versus Finn. I also really want to see Lesnar versus Owens and Lesnar versus Nakamura. Yeah. I think Lesnar versus Nakamura is the most likely one we'll get. Probably. That would be good. That would be watched, real good. I watched it from, like, 2009. Oh, right, yeah, because it's already happened. Yeah. And then next we had Chris Jericho defeating the face of America, Kevin Owens, for the Not United cool. States Championship. Not cool, man. Are we done with the gimmick already? The face of America? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was saying. It was like he just got that new ring gear. Yeah, and, and t-shirt with... and everything. Yeah. I don't know. I kind of wonder where they're going to go with it now. Is he maybe just going to go crazy? And like become an American citizen and all this? I don't know. Well, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know where you, I mean, it wasn't that strong of a gimmick in the first place. He did it just to be a dick. Yeah, and it only lasted for a couple weeks. Yeah. I mean, I like it. It's funny. Yeah, oh yeah, it's a great heel gimmick for, you know, being U.S. champion from Canada. Yeah. And being the face of America. Yeah. But, I don't know. Like I said on Twitter, though, not my U.S. champion. Damn straight. <laughs> that Twitter account is uh, Bradman25. And I'm best in the realm everywhere. Uh, Dutch was so fucking good. Yes. And it ended by DQ, which means we're getting more of this. Yes. I am so happy about that. Neville was so close to tapping the Aries. So close. And he grabbed the referee. And the referee pretty much said, screw you. You don't get to do that. You're disqualified. Yeah. That was, that was great. I love that Neville did that. I... Still want Neville to win the next match, the blow off match. Yeah. I just, oh, yeah. I'm so behind Neville now. Me too. He was I'm, always good. He was always good in the ring and he had an okay character. Yeah. Now King Neville is so damn good. If he loses the Cruiserweight belt, I want him to be going. 
Yeah, or something. He like needs that, to be going yeah. to higher levels. His gravity doesn't affect him, so he can easily go up. Yeah. Much harder to go down. I don't know. Yeah, Where that joke know? fell flat. That was terrible. <laughs> I regretted it as soon as I started saying. Gravity that. forgot about your joke. Yep. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Uh, next we had Matt and Jeff Hardy defeating Shazaro. That's trademarked by the future heels. Yeah. <laughs> they owe us money. They, they said like, it on air. Yeah, that they, was so freaking they owe cool. They like 41 cents for that. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. At least a plug. Yeah. Come on, WWE. Do something. Heard but, it from um, us, so. What's that? They heard it from us. That's right. They heard it first. Um, yeah, I was okay with this, though. This was a really good match. Yeah. I... I was hesitant about Sheamus and Cesaro in the first place because like, they're just throwing these guys together because they don't have anything better for them. And that's still the reason they're together. Right. I mean, that, that, let me make that clear. I'm okay with it, though, because it's so damn good. It, yeah, they work well together. They really do. Now they do. Yeah. Before, they were just kind of two separate single guys. Now they're awesome. Yeah, I, I do like them as a team. The whole and it, yeah, seven with absolutely. The and, the, and the match ended... Uh, w- was a great match through and through. Yeah. Given that we have four of like the best competitors in the WWE in that match, and uh, they shook hands afterwards. And yeah. I think you were going to tweet something like, I "Oh, I like this." Mid tweet, and then they <laughs> came back and ruined it. Like, yep. Guys, come on. And then they murdered Matt and Jeff. That was like my one of my favorite things about Ring of Honor when I first started watching Ring of right. Honor. Uh, I love the handshake at the beginning of the match. I forgot what they called it. It was something of honor. Everything was of honor, especially yeah. in the beginning. The but, suplex of honor, the punch yeah. of honor, the chop of honor. Yeah. But, uh, it's probably just the show of honor, I would guess. I don't know. I wonder what the first show was called. I don't know. It's in that box over there. Um. Oh, God. I know this. Ring of Honor's... God, I don't know. What is going to bother me? I have to Google it. That's the Ring of Honor's for sure. Wait, why do you say that? Huh? What, what makes you say that? Oh, I just wonder. What, I have two copies of it, VHS and DVD. I just can't think of what it was called. If it even had a name. It may not have even had a name. But just because everything was of honor. The era of honor begins? Yeah, that sounds right. Does it? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, that was the first time. First time. In February. Okay. Did it say what year? I, it did, but I closed it out oh, already. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, but, uh, yeah, the Ring of Honor stuff's good. Oh, gosh. Gotcha. need to get back into it more. Bring it up on the podcast. Um, yeah, that, that match was great. They came back, and Jeff got a tooth knocked out, and Matt got busted open. Yeah, I missed Damn. the tooth thing. I did, too. They just said it. I'm not sure if it really happened. No, it did. He smiled at some point in the match. You could see a gap. Oh, okay. Okay, I know, it happened. I know with announcers, part of their job is to. Oh sure. Oh, Just to elaborate kind of... on things that never happened. Like, I love when you're watching and they're like, "Oh, right to the face," and they kicked him in like the shin. <laughs> yeah. But you're like, "Oh, okay, he kicked him in the face then." <laughs> it doesn't say anything in this article about when he lost the tooth. Oh. Uh, Oh man, that white noise off the turnbuckle, that was that awesome. Movie, that was bad ass. I That's love that. That's one of that. my favorite moves to begin with. The white noise, yeah. Yeah. But, and I've never seen him do it. I don't know if it's, is it something he usually does? Yeah, it's one of his signature moves. Okay. It was, I don't know if it was a finisher for a while. I think it's always been the broke kick. Yeah, that's all I really remember. It was definitely a signature move, and he also has the white curse backbreaker, which is really good. I don't think I know what that is. Uh, think rock bottom, but when he lifts him up, he's up here. He yeah. brings him down over his knee. I think I think Austin really good move. did that in his match. I don't know. No, you know who does that? Roger Strong. Roderick Strong. <laughs> <laughs> Just every fucking brag breaker. Yeah. <laughs> Austin Aries, I'm like, no, it's probably Roger Strong. Yeah. Uh, let's not forget how awesome the... Messiah of the backbreaker. The Roger Strong little mini documentary was. Yeah. The new, uh, second part comes out, I think, in the next Wednesday, ep- right? Episode, yeah. Yeah. And that Dude. was Riverview, because I used to live there. Yeah, that that's was funny. 100%. That looked like the house I lived in. Jeez. 
So before we get to the next match, I want to point out, I think during the Matt Hardy match, or the, the Hardys versus Cesaro, yeah. I said, it would be funny. Yes. You know, you know what would be funny? If someone just won a match by suplex or DDT. Yeah. There's regular suplex or regular DDT. Yeah. So this next match, Alexa Bliss... Oh, thank God for Alexa Bliss. She's so wonderful. I'm, we love Alexa Bliss here. Yes. I'm sure you figured that out. She's yes. the best. Other than Sasha Banks. No. Uh, but where it's kind of close. were the balloons? Yeah, where the, the, what the hell? balloons where her parade was on Raw Talk. She's the she, best. She deserved it. She deserved it like Roman Reigns deserved it. <laughs> That's great. She's just, she's so genuine. It seems she's like, like yeah. where are my balloons? Yeah. Why is there nothing back here? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, God, really? Like, okay, you deserve it. Good Lord. But yeah, she's uh, the first ever SmackDown and Raw Women's Champion. Yeah. She's held both belts. She's the first one. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Very, very well deserved. Yeah, definitely. So happy about that. But um, she defeated Bailey. Yes. Uh, twice, Bailey hit. Bailey got launched in the turnbuckle, then she got launched into that uh, screen post. Yeah, I don't remember the turnbuckle when she got. I don't think it was that big of a spot. Yeah, I think it just kind of happened. Yeah, but, but um, the last the last one into the post was that looked like it hurt. Yeah, <laughs> that damn, was, that looked pretty serious. I was even a little yeah little worried for. Her. But uh, Alexa then DDT Bailey and won the belt. And yeah. I was like, hey. <laughs> And you, you told me that you asked for it. Yeah. You got it. It, it was a picture perfect. DDT. It really was. Yeah, it was. Like everything Alexa does. Yeah. But uh, Alexa, and before the match, I'll say, you know, I, I really think Bailey's going to win because it's her hometown. But the fucking heel heat that Alexa could get yeah, exactly. beating Bailey in her hometown. And yeah. sure enough, and Alexa said this on Raw Talk. She's like, I was scared. This is her hometown. Did yeah. you hear that crowd? And they, they were upset. And Bailey even had the look like she had the San Jose Shark on her tights as well. Probably. They were in the arena where they play. It was yeah. pretty big for her to lose there. But it, it was good. And uh, Alexa had her um, Iron Man gear. Yes. Which was pretty badass. Very cool. One of my favorites. I Yeah. I they just. I hope Alexa's one of those type. The one the. Alexa's one of those characters, one of those people. They should never be a face. She's just such a good heel. I love her as a face though in NXT too. When she like, when she did her, her heel turn, I was I was really upset. Well, when she was a cheerleader and then she went to like a techno psycho girl. Oh well, like she was the um, like the fairy, like with the fairy dust and the. Yeah, you wanted yeah. to go back to that. Not, not now. Yeah. But when she did the heel turn, I was like, no, why? And now it's just, I mean, it's it works perfect. Like, she's so good at it. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. She's just such a good heel. Even has the bitch face. And it's the best thing. Right. Yeah, back when she was, uh, what, how did her music start? I don't remember. It's like, color, glitter, bliss. No, color, oh, glitter, right. sparkle, bliss. Donna, Donna, Donna. I love her music it's so good yeah I listen to it all the time it's on my mp3 player <laughs> that plays in my car I need to add that to my list of intros it's great I have, I and she list. uses the version that's remixed because of Blake and Murphy which I think is um, kind of yeah. funny um and we'll be bringing them up in just a little bit yeah oh yeah that's right whoops okay. <laughs> yeah. We had to bring that up at the beginning. Well, that's okay. We'll we'll run through it at the end. It'll, we'll do I'll, it at the end, and then I'll cut it and put it at the beginning. So now you know about some bullshit editing that I did. Unless I edit this out, or we can, or we can leave it at the end. I'll run through it really quick. Yeah, we'll do it. That <laughs> way you don't have to worry about editing. There we go. And you guys got to hear all this. Congratulations. Yeah, you're real freaking special. Uh, <laughs> you got some inside baseball. That's... They they don't care about the inside baseball anymore. So, next to the next match, to the next movie, TV show, I don't know what we watched. I don't know, but it was, I liked it. I enjoyed it, yeah. Randy Orton versus Bray Wyatt, the House of Horrors match, part one. Part one, yeah, part one. Um, I mean, it ended, but the, the he's now WWE champion, and also taking indie bookings, apparently. 
go yes. follow at WWE the Frage or at WWE Frage. I'm not sure. The funniest Twitter account I've ever seen. <laughs> I hope it continues on because holy crap, it, it was, made me laugh it was hard. so fast. Yeah. Bray even got to the limo. Like it was the very beginning of a Seth Rollins Samoa Joe match, and I saw it. That's awesome. And uh, <laughs> anyways, um. So it was in this weird, broken down house in California, I guess. I just want to point out that at the time this was happening, it was six thirteen in right. San Jose. No way it was that dark when the right. crickets going. So yeah, it's pitch black. It shouldn't be. Um, and the, Randy walks up to this house, real creepy, goes in, and basically Randy and Bray just beat the hell out of each other all over this house with dolls and. Satanic room, shit. The the red room. Yeah, where, Randy didn't even go in. He just looked at and shook his head. Yeah, walked not, through the doorway, see all the satanic shit, and goes, "No, nah, today. <laughs> no, he's not in there. He's uh, <laughs> nope, not in there. No, you gonna look. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, then they ended up in the kitchen. They beat the shit out of each other with pans, pretty much. And uh, Bray pushed a fucking fridge on top of Randy Orton. And one, two, three, Fridge is the champion. Right. Congrats, Fridge. Good job. And uh, first then, appliance ever to win the heavyweight title for the Universal title. First appliance ever. I was going to say not first tool because Roman Reigns. Boom. <laughs> 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 uh, Guys, we're funny. That's <laughs> <laughs> funny. I'm funny. Uh, so yeah, that was, it was weird. It just ended with Bray getting in a limo and an Uber, we're assuming. Yeah. And, uh, leaving. Yeah. And we'll come back to that later. And singing. Singing. Oh yeah, that's right. He's got the whole world in his hands. It's so creepy. I I love it. I love it so So much. So creepy. Bray needs his own movie. Yes, he does. Yeah, we talked about that. It would just... The Wyatts. The Wyatt family. Make a horror movie off of them. Yeah. That needs to happen. I'm so mad that it's not. I mean, here's a list of reasons why they shouldn't do it. Alright. And we don't have time to go through the list of why they should. I I don't have anything why they shouldn't. Could you imagine if it was a movie first? And then the character from the movie? They'd fuck it up. Well, if they didn't fuck it up. Yeah, but that's not gonna happen. (laughs) (laughs) It's just not possible. Um... Yeah, I think it'd be incredible. Yeah. Even make it in the universe of Cedo Evil somehow. Yeah. Might as well. Resident Evil 7 is really big. It's about a family, about a murderous family. Do it similar to that. Yeah. Fuck it, just do it. Make money. Make it. Do it. Give us money because we gave you Yeah, money. we came up with the idea. I'm sure they've never thought of that themselves. Right. <laughs> so next, we had a match with Som- Samoa Joe versus Tyler... Versus Seth Rollins. Tyler Black. God damn, this was just a good wrestling match. Yeah. This is what... Neither one of these guys are mid-card guys. No. This is what you need in a mid-card. Right. Just a solid, not a whole lot of build-up reason for it. Other than Joe's pretty much been told to kill Seth. Yeah. See, this is one of the ones that is a good wrestling match. Mm Mm-hmm. Belongs on Raw. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now, am I upset that we watched it on Payback? No. It was a good match. But Raw needs stuff like that. They they need good matches. Right. Okay. And there, there wasn't a whole lot of build up to it, like you said, which is fine. But this is something that I felt could have just as easily been on Raw. Right. And if it was back in the day where we're paying sixty something dollars or fifty or thirty, even thirty. Oh god, yeah. I don't think I would have been very happy with no. it. No. And also, uh interesting factoid about this match is neither one of the guys got a clean finish win. Pit Rollins just kinda pulled some bullshit and pinned him. Yeah. So this isn't the end of, of this feud, I don't think. Oh, I don't think so at all. I think it's just the beginning. Yeah, which I I'm happy with. Because these both yeah. these guys are incredible. Oh yeah. Um, Seth needs a good push right now to remind the crowd why he's the best. Why he's the Kingslayer. <laughs> Fuck yeah, he is. God, I love that name. Jamie Lannister did it with one hand. That was pretty awesome. 
Right in my head. I don't I fucking know. know. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, and Seth, I guess you didn't. Have you seen his new finisher? Did you see it? Or I know. You, well, no, I was like a knee strike. Basically, just a jumping knee strike. It looks really good though. But what isn't it like uh, the Rainmaker? Isn't it like Okada's Rainmaker where he holds their arm and then does it? Yeah, I yeah. think so. Okay, that's pretty cool. That's right. I forgot Okada did that. Yeah, he's got that uh, where he like unrolls them, yeah, and pulls them back in, and hits the cl- short arm lariat. Right. Somebody else does that. Maybe I'm thinking of Chris Hero. Uh, I think so. I think he does that. Or Austin Aries. I don't know. Oh, they all one of them guys. guys. But yeah, this was a really great match. Um, I hope we get to see more of this. So. Oh yeah, I'm sure. Joe needs a good push. Seth needs a good push. Just put them, just let them kill each other for a couple pay per views, maybe. Yeah. Um. Then we had Bray Wyatt arrived at the arena. Yeah. Went out to the ring. Uh, was doing his whole entrance. Was standing there with his arms wide. Yeah. And then all of them with a chair, right? And that Randy popped in the screen. I saw a tweet out of the left side because I keep my laptop there. I'm tweeting the whole show at Best of the Realm and Brian Man 25. Uh, I saw a tweet from somebody, I can't remember who, that just said, LOL. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, pretty much. Like, uh, what the fuck did, how did Randy get there? I don't know. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, Randy showed up. They beat the hell out of each other for a little while. Uh, Randy got a really, really good RKO. And the fucking Bollywood boys showed up. Yeah. I was pretty confused at first. Which I guess makes sense. Yeah. But, well, I think Bray is the most confused out of all of us. Oh, I'm sure. Pretty yeah. much like, do I kill these guys? What yeah. do I do? <laughs> but, yeah, Bray ended up beating Randy because of it. Um, which, now, Bray Wyatt has a victory over the WWE Champion. Right. He should demand a spot in that Jinder Mahal and Randy Orton match. He absolutely should, even though he's on a different show. Yeah. Or maybe he should get a match against Lesnar. I would not be opposed to that. Could you imagine Bray messing with Lesnar and Heyman? Do you imagine Heyman just losing his collective shit over how much... And then Heyman abandons Brock because he's tired of being harassed. Yeah, he can't take it anymore. Ooh, and then Brock man. has to learn how to talk on the mic. <laughs> That's not gonna happen. Uh, Apparently, last time that happened, he freaked the fuck out and like murdered someone backstage. <laughs> God, yeah, I want to see that now. Bray versus Brock. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, why not? I mean, who's feuding with Lesnar now? No one. Literally no one. Exactly. He's just off on vacation. You think he even watches the fucking pay-per-views? No. He probably does not. I can tell you, I, you know who else does not watch a lot of wrestling? And I, when I found out, I was very upset about it. Who? Rob Van Dam. Yeah. Because he's my favorite. So. Yeah, but as a person, I think he's kind of a prick. I don't know. I think he seems pretty cool. Like, he's just... Time I've seen him. He's such a mega stoner. Oh, yeah, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Besides that, I mean, he has, he's got his own comic shop. Does he? Yeah, Five Star Comics. Oh. Huh. I mean, I don't know, I didn't meet I was say I did meet him, but no, I didn't, because I had to leave. I met Goldust. I know a lot of people who met him through TNA. Oh, okay. And we know someone who runs the Ocala Comic Con who knows him. Yeah. At least can get in contact with him, kind of thing. I hope I get to meet him one day. Yeah, I, mean, I don't hate him. I, I think I came across as like I hate him. I just he strikes me the wrong way. Yeah, and I get it. But he's he's, a, he's been, a great competitor, no doubt. Yeah, he's always been one of my favorites. Yeah. Uh, so now that we're done with that weird random tangent, yeah. <laughs> uh, the the main event, Braun Strowman versus like a quarter of Roman Reigns. Yeah. Because <laughs> damn, was he fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> the match was good. Yeah, it was pretty good. For you just as a couple big guys. 
a good match for that. They told a good story of uh, just Braun beating the hell out of Roman, Roman coming back, Roman even speared him. Yeah. And then, which, God, it's, was that a power slam to you, Braun's finisher? Uh, sort of. Well, I, I think that's the best you can describe it. Yeah, and I was thinking, I was like, well, it's a scoop slam. But running scoop slam doesn't sound as good as running power slam. Right. So, yeah. It's fine. It's a pretty good looking move. Yeah. It's scary coming from him. Yeah. So, but Braun like hit anything. him with, what's that? Like anything coming yeah. from him. Yeah. Braun hit him with two he running power serving slams. you breakfast in bed and it's going to be scary. <laughs> That's true, yeah. That would be fucking terrifying. Braun hit him twice with it and then picked up the win. Yeah. And uh, we're, this was like, what, 20-something minutes left of the show? Yeah, it was uh, 1041 exactly. Okay. When the bell rang. And I was like, how much time we got left? Yeah. Oh, man. We're... Uh, and then replay after replay after yeah. replay after replay. But then Braun decided that he's not done. Yeah. Went back. After Roman like coughed up blood on the wall. That was pretty gross. Oh, no, we haven't got to that part. So Braun, Braun decided he wasn't done, and he went back and he got the ring steps. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. And he basically, what would you call it, like a flapjack kind of thing? Yeah. Right onto the steps. Yep, dented and, the steps. Yeah, dented the steps. I was hoping he'd pick them up and like power bomb them off the top of the steps. Yeah, that's always been one of my favorites. That is a good I spot. Cool. But then he uh, he slammed the steps right into Roman Reigns like chest or gut. Yeah. And then Roman and then he left, and, and Roman basically walked to the back. And replay after replay, <laughs> more replay. Yeah, so many replays. Uh, at this point, Roman, you could see that there was blood all over his tape, yeah. all over his mouth. In the ring, Yeah, there was a little puddle of blood. And uh, he, when he passed the uh, announcer's table, they were trying to get him on the gurney, and he just refused. Yeah. He was like, no. <laughs> like, it really was quite the sight. Yeah. And, I mean, kudos to Roman. That, like, they brought a gurney over, and he's like, no, that didn't end well last time. Yeah. <laughs> I'd rather not be restricted. Yeah. Uh, and then we've got to the ambulance. Yeah. Roman is standing there, and you hear, "I'm not done with you yet." Which yeah. I think is how his music should start now. Yeah. Sure. I don't see why not. <laughs> and uh, Roman got out of the way, and then Braun murdered an ambulance again. <laughs> he hit the fucking door and it tore it off. Blew. And then just. <coughs> Into that pile of Home Depot boxes. Yeah. That I noticed earlier that I was right. to see what they were going to do with. But, uh, and before anybody gives me shit, I know it was a fucking prop door. Doesn't matter. I don't know, man. I think, I think if, uh, Ron Strowman ran into an ambulance door, I think he'd probably tear it off. I've spent some time around ambulances with my old job. There's no way. They're, um, like, solid. No way. Probably. Maybe. Yeah. I feel like if I ran into a car door. Especially your car door. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he he nailed that door and it went flying like a goddamn discus. Yeah, that was pretty. Crazy. That was crazy. Um, he ran into the boxes, and Roman. I mean, it seems like Roman ran away. Braun ran away. Oh, that's right. Yeah, he went down the hallway. Yeah, and then Roman just stood, kind of at the tailgate of the ambulance, and then we cut to Alexa Bliss. Just bitching about how there wasn't any streamers or... Right, yeah. She's like, where are my balloons? Yeah. Balloons. <laughs> streamers. Parade. She yeah. wanted a parade as well. I love Which she deserved. But she didn't get. And that's, that's wrong. Oh my gosh. She's just the best. <laughs> she's adorable. She's gorgeous. She's an incredible wrestler. She's an incredible talker. Has like, a great ring gear. She does. She's, a, she's like a perfect 10. Her and Ty Dillinger should be a thing. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why, but <laughs> yeah, so, two, two totally different personalities. Yeah, so that was payback. That was, I mean, I was entertained the whole time. Yeah, I don't think I was. I wasn't disappointed. The House of Horrors was weird, it was weird. but we also, but it was fun. 
We asked for that. If you go yeah. back and listen to the podcast, we asked for more weird. Yeah. And I'm like, fine with that. Yeah. It's like, well, it's one of those things that I would have been upset if I had read in like a month or so. This was the idea at Payback to do this. Right. Fuck, why didn't they do that? They yeah. just did it. They tried it. You cannot take anything away from them trying. Yep. And it wasn't bad. That was bad. And like I said, it was fun to watch. It was a little, strong okay. Yeah. One little nitpick thing about it. If they would have just taken the live off the top of the screen, <laughs> then you really you'd have no... Is that had. false advertisement? I think so. Can we see them? Oh, God. Sorry. I know you listen to this podcast, Vince. I didn't mean it. No, it was a joke. It was a joke. We would never do that. Nope. Um, we could probably sue us for 800 other Yeah, things. we're fucking suing them for Cesaro. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah, that was payback. I enjoyed it. Uh, I think the only thing I'm upset about is um, Kevin losing his belt. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't cool. But we'll see where that goes, though. Yeah, maybe. Uh, when what? <laughs> we watched so much wrestling today. When did Sammy come into the picture? Was that when we were watching SmackDown? That wasn't a Tonight Show, was it? No, that was SmackDown. That was SmackDown? Yeah. Alright, maybe it's just opening something up for that. Yeah. Everyone wants to see it. Yeah, it's going to happen eventually. Hopefully it's for over the WWE Championship, though. Yeah. I do want those guys to be separated until one of them is WWE Champion. I do kind of, even if they were going to separate them, either, you know, starting this next week, I like that he keeps showing up. Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. So. No doubt. And, uh, so... You wanted to talk about your NXT show you went to yesterday. Yes. Um, Saturday, April 29th, in Orlando, Florida, at the Inglewood Neighborhood Neighborhood Center. The neighborhood. Yep, <laughs> that one. Um, the goddamn herd of neighbors. <laughs> uh, it was a good show. Uh, it wasn't bad. There wasn't a whole... We got to see Lana. Yeah, Lana, again. <laughs> Lana's so bad. If you like Lana, then you're wrong. I like her character. I like the cabaret thing she's doing. It, that's an interesting idea, but you have to be able to wrestle. Oh, yeah, no doubt. And she cannot. I don't know why they don't just leave her as, their, as Rusev's freaking manager. I don't know. She's well, so good in that role. And now she has her own manager. Oh, so, yeah. So just reminds me of Rosario Dawson. I, I know I, I haven't seen her so I don't know okay um I mean, that's right because you're usually working on those days yup um yeah it was a uh, interesting venue it was a a gym like a neighborhood basketball court gym museum type situation right um yeah, uh, and the show started off, um, we had the same ring announcer lady as, uh, as the Citra, as the Crystal River show. Right. Who was doing interviews on the latest episode of NXT, and as far as the ring announcing, she's terrible. She's, <laughs> she's not good. I mean, she might get better, but might. she's not that good. Uh, but she tries, I guess. Maybe not enough. Anyway, uh, the first match was Jeet Rama versus Wesley Blake. And I don't know if you've seen Jeet Rama yet. I feel like he's in the faction, or going to be in the faction with Jinder. Uh, could be. I'm not sure. I think he's Indian. Okay. Uh, he comes out, Indian music. He comes out and he does a little dance. Singlet. And it looks like a... Like a bicyclist singlet or like a like a runner singlet. I don't know if runners wear singlets. Right. But it just looked like it looks like he got it at like Dick Sporting or something like that. And the front says Jeet and the back says Rama. And I just have a feeling he bought the singlet and it just said Jeet on the front. He's like, Well, I guess my name's Jeet now. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. It looks that's exactly what it looks like. Um, okay, I haven't seen a picture of it. You're looking at it right now? Yeah. Doesn't it kind of look like he bought it and was like, oh, well, I, do. I guess my name is Jeet Rama. Huh. 
Hope they don't mind. He, he is supposed to be the next member of uh, that faction. Okay. I mean, he's not bad. Um, he's like a uh, Indian. Uh, uh, oh my God! The guy that just got fired. Simon the, Gotch. Yes, the mustache. Oh, kind of. <laughs> um, but he beat Wesley Blake. Um, because uh, via disqualification. Because Steve Cutler came out, who is the most offensive man at NXT. Oh, yeah. Yeah, zero fricks given. Zero fricks given! And uh, Wesley Blake, I just want to point out, came out looking a lot like Baron Corbin. But he had, like, the Texas flag on his tights, with, huh. like, barbed wire. Looked nothing like when he was with Murphy. Interesting. And someone yelled, where's, uh, someone yelled, where's Murphy? And he turned around and he's like, I hate Murphy. Damn. Yeah. And Steve Cutler came out, and they beat up Jeet. Uh, wasn't very long. Did Jeet come out with a prop? No, he just done a little dance. This picture I see of him, he has like a big fucking, like a baseball bat with a giant end. Of, I don't know what it is. What it reminds me of is those weights, like I think uh, Iron Sheik used to have. The, you know what I'm talking about? No, I don't. They're like these big wooden weights. You just kind of oh. do that. I know no one can see me. No. Uh. Okay. <laughs> um, but no, no, he just comes out. He does a little dance thing, and that's about it. Um, I didn't think Lana was the second match. But uh second match, I guess, was uh, Lana versus Sarah Bridges. Lana came out, did her little dance thing, and... Uh, Sarah Briggs came out and after posting some pictures and stuff on Twitter we found out that uh, a lot of people didn't know who Sarah Bridges was Club Bells that's what I'm thinking of so if you look up Club Bells you know what I'm talking about Okay. Um, apparently Sarah Bridges is or used to be Crazy Mary Dobson who I looked up and I've seen her before. I never, I don't think I've seen her matches, but I've seen her on like promo uh, flyers and stuff. Mm hmm. And uh, I'm looking her up now. Okay. And she, I think she was in NXT before as like a Viking chick, and I remember seeing that and uh, thinking that was really, really badass. Um, but now she's just using Sarah Bridges, which is her, I think her real name. Huh. And, uh, oh, what did I do? There we go. Um, and after doing a little bit of research, found out that, uh, she's actually either dating or married to Raymond Rowe from War Machine. Right. And, uh, yeah, I think that's where she got the Viking gimmick. Or they were Currently Viking. signed to WWE under her real name. Yes. Sarah Bridges. But Lana beat her somehow. I don't know. It was dumb. <laughs> I was mad. Lana can't wrestle for shit. And Sarah Bridges came out and she was amazing. Like, she was so good. So. Oh, Lana hit her stupid finisher, which I hate. I don't even know how to describe it on here. But it looks like it's setting up to be a cool, like, exploder suplex. Because I'm just stupid. <laughs> <laughs> it's just nothing. Apparently Sarah Bridges finisher. It's a split-legged moonsault. And his signature moves are the Hail Mary, the handstand transition into a knee drop onto a kneeling opponent, and headbutt. <laughs> she did the headbutt. Really? Yeah, because she had Lana like doubled over and she just screamed off with her head and just headbutt. The headbutt of the shit out of Lana. Jesus! I mean, it was cool. <laughs> you don't see many people doing the headbutt anymore. Especially, you know, the female wrestler. Yeah. But yeah, she just had her double. I think she was holding like her hair and she just screamed off with her head and just headbutted the shit. Good out lord. Of cool. So now we've got Ruby Riot, uh, uh, oh my god, the girl from Sanity. Nikki Cross. Nikki Cross and Crazy Mary Dobson. What's yeah. with the crazy chicks in NXT? Well, now, her gimmick's not crazy now. Like, she. Because she's built from Kentucky, so. Okay. That was kind of the thing. Like, she Well, had, they're probably just like. Get in front of the crowd and we'll figure out the character. Right. I hope they bring back the fucking Viking character she had when she first started. 
because I saw pictures of that with the yellow ropes, like NXT okay. yellow ropes, and I was like, that looks really familiar. I think I oh. saw her once, but um, really cool. Yeah, they close the uh, Wikipedia page, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but then they need to bring in uh, War Machine with her. So yeah, I think so. Uh, but yeah, that match because of Sarah Bridges was badass. Uh, long aside. Moving on. Um, third match. Two big dudes. Uh, Brennan Williams was the first guy whose Twitter handle is what was it? Um, Great Black Otaku, I believe. <laughs> At Great Black Otaku or something like that. Name. And, uh, I was like, that's funny. And then his bio says he's a LARPer and a tabletop game player. Yeah, you took like 20 minutes to read all of his titles. <laughs> yeah. I was like, this dude's awesome. He's like 7'6". Just step over the top. Uh, came out with like these cool, like he, it looked like Shao Kahn on the side of his tights. Black and red tights. But like a, uh, and he had a leather vest with a chain and, uh, black and blonde reds and sunglasses for some reason his sunglasses <laughs> he looked like an 80s movie villain okay yeah like for sure that's a cool look yeah and uh the moveset was pretty good but then the other I thought this guy was big but then the next guy to come out uh, oh he had cool music too I don't remember exactly but it was cool the next guy to come out had some it was almost it was kind of tribally sounding music Okay. And I didn't, I couldn't, like, if I heard it, I wouldn't be able to tell you what his name was. Okay. And now that I'm reading it, I can try to pronounce it. Oh, jeez. Um, first name is Babatunde. I'm not going to try the last name. I can't do it. But we're just stick with Babatunde. What, uh, what nationality is he? African. Okay. Uh, he had an African print, um... Uh, like poncho style thing okay with uh I think he had like big, big wooden necklace the guy was like 8 foot 14 inches tall and literally did weigh 355 pounds uh apparent on here uh apparently he was a Minnesota Vikings prospect um and he didn't have tights but he had pants with the same uh African print and um, I don't know what they're called exactly, but they were sort of like belt flags when we were LARPing. Okay. Just kind of like a, a small piece of fabric that hangs on the front of your belt and the back of your belt. Right. On the front, he just had a couple like green stripes, and on the back, it was an elephant, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, he had some pretty it was cool gear. Um, just big dude, and his. They, they had a pretty decent match for being two gigantic guys. Um, and uh, Baba Toon Day won. And <laughs> I'm reading all I'm reading all this off of WrestleZone just so to make sure I get everything right. Right. And uh, and I totally agree that he's probably going to get a name change. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, probably his real name. That could be. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I just can't even pronounce A I Y E G B U S I that's his last name I'm not going to try I'm not going to say it right um I think that's where we had intermission um and then we had Oni Lorcan which is always great to have oh yeah um former diffuser yes he beat Adrian Jude, I think is how you pronounce his last name. Okay. The Warrior. We oh, oh okay, name. awesome. So, of course, that was a really good match. Super solid. Um, yeah. Adrian Jude. J-A-U-D-E. Alright, that's really good to know. Um, yeah, solid match. Uh, the next match was Buddy Murphy. Uh, I shouldn't have started with Buddy Murphy. 
Uh, but it was Buddy Murphy teaming up with Jeet from earlier. Right. To And they beat Wesley Blake and Steve Cutler. Okay. So it's kind of like a revenge match from later on. Or from earlier on. Right. Uh, it was uh, it was actually a really really good match. Um, Jeet didn't do a whole lot because he's still I think he's still sort of new, but Buddy Murphy just freaking killed it. Like Buddy Murphy's so. Oh, good. Of course, yeah. Um, his tights and his jacket say "Best Kept Secret." <laughs> and then and, I see you, okay. Yeah, he's, he's just so good. So he is. Good. Him and Wesley both are really really good. Yeah, Steve Cutler wasn't bad. I mean, Steve Cutler's getting there. Yeah, and I, I would, I would totally buy Zero Fricks given on a team. I would too. I love that he's the most offensive man in NXT, but because it's <laughs> NXT, he can't nope. be that offensive. Um, so that was a really fun match. Um, next match was Mandy Rose versus Liv Morgan. Uh, wasn't this match at your last show? No, we had Mandy Rose versus Oscar at the last. Oh, show. okay. And Liv Morgan versus unnamed. <laughs> uh, I forgot who she who she fought. Um, Liv Morgan's but, been around for quite a while. Yeah, and I see. I always see Liv Morgan T-shirts. Oh yeah, like there's always people. She's very popular. Um, I can see why. I mean, she's really good. Yeah, Mandy Rose is getting better, but she's just kind of boring as a personality. Yeah, um, the stripper gimmick. Right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know. As you can figure. Yeah, I don't know what else it is. Uh, but Mandy Rose won. Uh, and then the next match was uh, Angelo Dawkins and Montez Ford. Oh, yeah, I see who name you skipped. <laughs> is uh street the, I think they call themselves the Street Profits. Right. Versus Otis and Tucker of Heavy Machinery. O Otis what? Yep, that one. <laughs> Dozovic. Dozovic. <laughs> That's the first name on here. I like that you skip to the next <laughs> team. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've got that page pulled up here. I'm okay. calling you out on your bullshit. <laughs> Um, well, because uh, Street Profits came out first, in my defense. <laughs> okay, sure. Um, they got something about Red Shoes, Red Solo Cup. I don't know. Okay. They're, they're doing a thing. And they're, they're fun. They're stirring the pot. Yeah, Angelo's still stirring the pot. I don't know what, what he's doing. I don't know what he's stirring. Angelo. He's stirring it. Okay, hold on. I got I to gotta get this microphone. Angelo. Angelo, listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> It's just me here. Brian stepped out for a minute. The stir in the pot thing, your little, you're stirring your pot, whatever you're doing with your hand motion. Stop fucking doing it. <laughs> it's so dumb. Quiet, you're not here. I'm sorry. <laughs> just yeah, listen, sure. Angelo. Stop doing it, man. No one's gonna like that fucking hand motion thing every I, I feel like every time I see it it's different but I think I just hate it so much I'm blocking it out of my brain just please stop I'm asking you as a fan please stop what are you doing Why, I, why'd you I, come I, back I'm, in here <laughs> I'm in the kitchen I'm getting a drink yeah you can all right you can come back Ryan okay oh I almost broke the mic I'm sorry, I had to go in the kitchen and stir the pot a little bit. Ah! <laughs> I gotta. I will admit, though, I caught myself doing it. Don't, I encourage don't it. encourage the behavior. <laughs> um, that was a. This was a really, really fun match, and I love sportsmanship, Ring of Honor style sportsmanship. Like sure. I talked about earlier, they shook hands at the end. Okay. They both had. They, you could tell they both had fun. Like both teams. Um, I know that name, Montez Ford. Yeah, he was doing, uh, he was fighting Otis, and, uh, Otis is the bigger one, the whiter one of Heavy Machinery. I have 100% seen this Montez Ford guy. Oh, I'm sure. Okay. Um, 
And like he did like a little dance move and like did like an elbow drop or something. And like a few, Otis kind of takes over and like shoulder blocks him or something. And Otis kind of looks around and does the Macarena <laughs> and then drops an elbow. <laughs> Which I, I laughed so damn hard. I thought it was the best thing ever. Um, but Heavy Machinery ended up winning. Uh, yeah, it was a really, really fun match. And it was time for the main event. And Riddick Moss comes out with that other guy, Tito. T- Tino Sabatelli. Yeah. Who, now that I've seen him again... I think he used to go. I think he used to wrestle on the FIP show that I used to go to. I can't remember what his name was. I don't but he also looks like super, super generic. So, sure, he's yeah, I he's got to be wrong. Work on. No, he didn't. You didn't see him before. He was a football player before, and then he went to WWE. Okay, but you know, uh, him as a football player. You no, you've probably <laughs> seen him in promos for Breaking Ground. Because he's one of the main guys in Breaking Ground. That could be it. He's really he's a really charismatic guy. I hope he is or becomes a good pro wrestler. Because his personality I think, is great. And I think putting him with Riddick, who's a really good wrestler, is a great idea. Um, Yeah, I mean, and Riddick is good, a good wrestler, but he's not main event status right now. To I me think at he's, all. though, he's... Yeah, I, I don't know. They're grooming him to be one of the next big NXT guys. Oh, I know. But right now, I mean, he do, he doesn't do anything for me right now. Yeah. Um. He seems like he just needs that one more thing. Yeah. And he's good. Um. To me, he seems like a just a bigger version of Sal Renaro. If you know who that is. I know that name. Yeah. You probably see him in Ring of Honor... Or, like, probably Chikara. I think right. He in Chikara a lot. Um, yeah, he just reminds me of a bigger Sal Renaro. Huh. Um, so, I, that was the main event. And I even, I wrote you on Facebook. I was like, our main event's got really lost on it. Like, Is was, Sal Renaro the guy from the, the Cole Cabana documentary? Probably. Pretty sure he is. I'm pretty sure they're, they, I, I know they know each other well. I don't know how well, but, but yeah, like, I was pretty upset. I was like, I'm in Orlando. It's, like, two hours from my house. Yeah. Which isn't the only reason we went to Orlando, technically. But I was like, really? This is what we're going to get? We're going to get Riddick Moss? Yeah, because that Orlando show is just part of the circuit. Right. It's not a taping. Yeah, it wasn't a taping. It was, it was not at Full sale. Yeah. So I'm like... Ocala gets a lot of the bigger names. I, we got more names than this show did. Yeah? Oh, definitely. Like, okay. we got Oscar. We got yeah. Hideo. We that's got true. Jack Gallagher. Gallagher. Yeah. I mean, and that's just off the top of my head. Well, Jack <laughs> was on his way. Oh, no. Well, never mind. I did what you did. I and mixed up uh, SmackDown, what we watched earlier in the paper show. Yeah. <laughs> so, um... Yeah, we got Blake and Murphy at this one. Until... The main event music hit. That's right, Ray Moss's opponent. And it was Cassius Ono. Oh no! Oh no. Everyone lost their collective shit. I think I jumped up out of my seat. I'm sure. Uh, uh, just everyone just lost it. It was it was great. He came out, had his had a really good entrance. Um the match starts and he gets his ass beat for really? a while. Riddick Moss is just kind of handing it to him. And I'm sitting there I'm like, Cash, come on. I've, I've talked you up for months <laughs> and you're just getting it handed to you right now by this guy. <laughs> and, uh... Were you getting triggered? <laughs> yes. <laughs> No, I was I, I was like, what is going on? And um felt like he needed to complain to management. Yeah. And but then all of a sudden he got him with that uh that weird headbutt that he does. Oh, okay, yeah. The like it reminds me of like Street Fighter. Like Bison. Yeah. 
Or the M. Bison that used to do that weird, like, flying headbutt thing. Like, straight out headbutt. Yes. Yeah, like, he hits him with that move, and all of a sudden, it's, it's on. Like, he goes full Cassius Ono, Chris Hero mode, and just beats the living shit. I love it when the heel controls the match, and then the face makes a, a comeback. I love that. Yeah, but he had no, like, no oh, offense. Right. Like, not a one. Damn. Like, and yeah, you know, the like the hot tag, especially in tag yes. matches. Uh, which we had with uh, Jeet and Murphy. Right. Like, the crowd just lost it when Murphy got in. Um, but yeah, I mean, just hand it to him. And then finally he gets to, he took over and just beat the living shit out of, uh, out of Riddick Moss. And death by elbow chain. He was just, uh, oh, mafia kick. You. Well, that came later. One little one. Yeah. Well, he, uh, Tito got up on the ring, uh, the ring apron. He, like, mafia kicked him. Turn like mafia kick Riddick Moss again. When you say mafia kick, someone knows that as a haluba kick. Uh, well, not just in the corner though. Just right, like, like, like a big, like a running big boot. Yeah. Um, she'll drop it quick with a mafia kick. So there you go. Uh, that's the opening line to his his old song. Right. Um, but he's kicking the hell out of everybody and just beating the hell out of everybody. And then he's got, like, he's got Riddick Moss, I think. I don't know if this is how it happened, but this is how I remember it happening. This is how it happened in your head. Yeah. He's got Riddick Moss in the middle of the ring, uh, kind of dazed. And he just yells, Oh no's gonna kill you. And then everyone starts chanting it, and he hits the rolling elbow, and just knocks him the hell out. Ah. I, don't, I don't think that's how it really happened, but that's how it happened in my head. But I know at one point he did have Riddick Moss dazed, and he did just have everyone start chanting, oh, no, he's going to kill you. And then for the next 45 minutes to an hour, that's all my three-year-old daughter would say <laughs> and would not stop saying still it. still saying it. She's still saying it. Oh, no, he's going to kill you. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, Cash Soto beat Riddick Moss, thank God. And uh, with the rolling elbow, knocked his ass out. Yeah, look, God, that move looks so devastating. Yeah. And then when he got out of the ring, uh, Cassius, when he got out, uh, he put on Riddick Moss's little uh, little vest, little gold oh, vest. Oh, yeah. It's pretty funny. Uh, yeah, all in all, it was a pretty good show. Worth driving to Orlando? No. I don't, like, <laughs> if I knew... If I knew that was the show I was about to go watch, I would not drive two hours for it. Yeah. Um, oh, that's right, because it was further away. Because I just went to Orlando, too, but it was further away than where I was at. Yeah. Uh, it was... Cause, well, yeah. we had to go to Kissimmee to meet... It was past Kissimmee. Um, I don't remember. Or deep into Kissimmee, rather. Yeah, we, we had to go to Kissimmee to meet up with the people we went with. And then we had dinner first, and then... They went to the show. Right. Which, all in all, was a great trip. But I wouldn't drive two hours if I was going to see that same show again. I see, because we got Chris River, Citrus Springs, Leesburg, I think, Brooksville, Ocala. We got quite a few shows we could go to. Yeah. And the that's trouble just is they the do just, they just have, I think, the, some of the same matches. Um, some maybe? Of. Um... I know a while ago we used to literally see matches right before they aired on TV. Yes, there was one show in particular we saw the pay per view. Yeah, it was <laughs> uh yeah one of the takeovers we saw yeah. basically the entire show. It was and pretty wild. It was pretty cool. Um, yeah, all in all, it was, it was a good show. Um, yeah, like you said, we have them everywhere. At Ocala. We can go to that show. We should start going to that show. We just got to pay more attention to when they come around. Yeah. And that's just NXT. We have other promotions all over the place. Yeah. Wrestling has it tomorrow. Yes. Entertainment One Wrestling. Huh? I remember the name. Ah, good job. <laughs> and there's WXW, who every time they book a show, I always have something already going that day. Even, like, their next one coming up is May 20th. The day before Backlash, it's like I have, oh, okay. I'm definitely doing something important that day. Important to me, but I'm definitely doing something important that day. Like I 
can't go. So yeah, uh, it happens. Life happens. You just gotta yeah. pick the things you want to do. Yep. Um. Yeah. Uh, speaking of wrestling, has tomorrow. I believe next week we will have. Uh, I don't want to say his name because I'm not sure if he goes by that, by his real name or not. Yeah, uh, next week or very soon. Uh, he he really wants to come on next week because it's the yeah. week before his show. Yeah. Um, we will have the. I believe he's still co-owner or ex-co-owner. Um, uh, head booker, I believe, of Wrestling Has of Tomorrow. Um. He'll be on to promote their show that they're doing May 13th in Crystal River at the Armory. Um, I forget what the show is called. Um, something Left to Give or Nothing Left to Give or something like that. I'm sure he will correct us when yeah. he comes on. Um, and we'll see, we will probably have a very close working relationship with that company. I from, hope so. From what I can tell. Um, We're going to... We're probably going to record something. I don't know if we'll release it. I got to see how it sounds. Yeah. Because if it sounds like crap and you can't hear us, or you can hear us and there's a whole lot of background noise, I don't know if that's worth releasing. Yeah, I have. I do have an idea about that. I'll talk to you when we okay. finish the show. We'll see. Um, but yeah, we will have something from the show, whether it's just photos. We'll have videos. No doubt I will be posting videos on the Future Villains YouTube page, and they will also be on futurevillains.com. We'll be able to uh, get some exclusive content. As sure. Well. Get uh, some interviews or something. I'm sure we can work something out. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm very excited about this partnership we have coming up. Um, I found out where they train. That you shouldn't have found that out. <laughs> what, what? No, you're right. I shouldn't have. Is it close? Uh, Yes. Jeez. Oh, <laughs> it's even closer to you. Well, guys, this is uh, Brian's last show. Yep. Rest uh, in peace. My hernia will rupture by the, last, <laughs> by the next time I talk God. to you, and uh, I will die. <laughs> and I'll just have a heart attack. So, but after my surgery, then we'll be good to go. Making my big comeback. I should. I'll talk about this off camera. My gear is right behind, in the box, right directly behind you. Woo! And my old title belts are in that box right there. I'm so close to so much history. There's a lot of history in this room. Board games over there, too. Board games. That's fully Comic related. Books. Star Wars. You'll see all this soon, actually, if we ever get the video portion up. But, that's it for this show. Did you have something else? Or at least some promo photos. Yeah, at least some promo photos. Yeah, we could do that. Uh, so that's, that's it, it for this show. Uh, this is going to be episode 11. We're in the double digits now. We did it. Now we just gotta get the triple digits. Oh my god. That's so much <laughs> farther than the doubles. Whew, yeah, that'll be a long ways away. But thank you for listening once again to the Future Heels podcast. You can find us on iTunes. You can find us on SoundCloud. You can find us on YouTube at Future Villains Entertainment. You can find us on our website, FewTrueVillains.com. That's F-E-W-T-R-U-E-V-I-L-L-A-I-N-S.com. You can find me on Twitter at Best in the Realm. You can find me on YouTube at Best in the Realm. I do Let's Plays there. Right now I'm doing a Let's Play on Destiny, getting ready for Destiny 2. And I'm getting ready with Bearded Gaming Entertainment. You can check him out. He's part of the Future Villains as well. Diablo 3, because Beard has never played that freaking game somehow. Uh, and you can also find me Best of the Realm, or sorry, twitch.tv slash Best of the Realm. And you can find Brian uh, on Twitter at Brian25, Instagram uh, Brian1138, uh, YouTube Nerdy Brian Man, and uh, on the Few True Villains website as well. Damn yeah, straight. Alright, guys, uh, thank you for listening, and let's stop. <laughs>